Welcome in the sim world today. It's a beautiful day in sim world, everybody. Except there is a storm brewing as I'm joined for the very first time on sim world today by JR Storm, the cowboy. The cowboy is here. What's up, fellas? Yes, sir. JR Storm, how are we doing today? Happy to have you on the show. A little different show. I've uh, I'm I'm hosting it. You know, Martian and B Ron are. Uh, fighting hurricanes and doing what they do so we're here we're excited how are we feeling today i'm feeling great ready to talk a little sim world making my debut on sim world today with y'all that's right so first topic we'll get us uh started off jim harbaugh now i'm sure you remember all the drama that was around uh michigan in 2023 there was a bunch of allegations about cheating and misconduct and such jim harbaugh who's since been hired as the head coach of the los angeles chargers denies any wrongdoing says that he didn't do anything wrong all he did was coach hard tell his players to play hard always follow the rules and that uh there's there's no there's no wrongdoing on jim harbaugh's part jr storm do, do we believe this do we think that this is just kind of a PR thing? Is it behind him in his mind? He's not worried about it. Obviously, he's doing fine, but what do you think? Well, first and foremost, the obvious, I'll state, I find it hard to believe that if that there is no major Power 5 college football program that has not truly committed any wrongdoing at some point. But, you know, the more this situation keeps coming up, you just gotta, there's gotta be at least somewhat a truth to it. You know, I'm not here to speculate, but multiple level one and level two violations for up to seven to eight different members of this Michigan staff have come up. And the sad part about it is, unless Jim Harbaugh returns to college football from the NFL, you know, nothing can be done if anything comes out of it. But the more and more this comes up, I just think there's got to be some truth to it. Absolutely. And you got to think if there was a thought in Harbaugh's mind that he would return to college football, which I'm not sure that there was, um, this probably would would tell us that he's not going to. But I think that that's the real question in my mind. Will it affect him at all in his NFL coach or in his SWFL coaching career? Um, you know, if he doesn't do such a great job with the Chargers in his first few years, does it give him a shorter leash, kind of? Um, denying these allegations, these allegations existing, or do you think SWFL GMs even care? Or are they, you know, going to say same thing, similar to what you said, that every Power 5 conference does something like this? Harbaugh might not have been involved at all, because most Power 5 conference schools that are that big have different guys to handle doing things like that, so that the head coach is not involved. So it's a it's an it's an interesting thing. I'm sure that something happened. I'm sure there's truth to it. Whether Harbaugh was involved or not, I guess we'll never know. But moving on, talk about I don't want to talk about anything specific, JR Stone, but I want to talk about the idea of high school drama because as someone who follows Sim World Hoops closely, you know, I pay attention to the media. I, I read my I read my news every day, uh, with a cup of coffee, a nice warm cup of joe. Uh, and I've been hearing a lot about I, the, the name specifically don't matter because that's kind of the point I want to get to about some high school drama, some some high school basketball players going back and forth on social media. There being a big thing made of it. These guys are from different countries. Um, and so what's so cool to me is that we live in an age where you can beef with someone who's in a completely different country. I think that's really cool. What I think yeah. is interesting and maybe it's just been a couple of slow news days. But why, why am I hearing coverage about it in the national, in the national news, J.R. Storm? That, that's what I'm wondering. And so I think my question for you is, how, how enticing is it for sports fans to hear about high school drama between two, first of all, not just two high school basketball players, but two high school basketball players who haven't made their name yet? What's the, what's the deal here? I mean, slow news week, I mean, who knows, but uh, the part, the one thing I come back to, you know, with all this, was to be at the prep level, you know, at the SimWorld U level or at the SWBA level, 
I'm a big fan of beef at any level because you know what? It brews rivalries, it brews heat, and especially when you add it to rivalries that already have enough heat to begin with and it just gives it that extra level of edge to it. So I'm all for a little bit of beef, to tell you the truth. I look, look, I'm here with you. USDA grade one beef. Give it to me. Give me a lot of it. Throw it on the grill. Yeah. Just slap it around. Some Just some meat on the grill slapping around. I'm here for it. <laughs> My question is, I, to, to me, it's one thing if I'm hearing about, you know, the number one and number two ranked prospects in the world in prep ball beefing. These guys, and, and I mean this with all due respect, haven't really heard much of their names before. Um, and 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 they're not even affiliated with a sim world prep team yet. So my question is, are they that good? Because this is giving me the impression that these two recruits are going to be absolute world beaters. That we're going to see these guys on ESPN before they're even in sim world. You, that's the impression I'm getting. So as much as I love the beef, like you said, bring me that USD one, USDA grade one beef. I, I think uh, I think it's a it's a little silly to me, but you know. We'll see. Maybe I could be wrong. They could be the best players since sliced bread. We'll see. Moving on, J-Rock, we got this Saturday coming up the second ever Kaiju blood battle. You know, that was a, a game that was organized last season in the off offseason. Um, was picked up by SimWorld TV and broadcasted. Give the guys a little extra exposure. Um, they've upped their game a little bit this year. We've got Kai Killens leading the Southsiders. And then on the other side, the Terrors being led by Almighty Saul. Now, Almighty Saul and Kai Killens were two of the top guys in SimWorld Prep, regardless of age. Um, but they were also, in their very first year in SimWorld Prep, they'll be leading teams full of recruits still kind of trying to make their name, including guys like Trey DeRozan playing with Kai Killens and guys who are already pretty well known, like Terrell Coleman playing with Almighty Saul. Thoughts, excitement, what do you got? I tell you, one name in this whole thing that I'm excited to see, like you said, is Terrell Coleman. Just the utter down potential of dominance that this guy has shown, you know, in open runs and whatnot thus far in this offseason. Going to be one of the... He not going to be. He is one of the more high-profile SimWorld prep recruits, you know, in this, not just the southern region, but, you know, across the globe. And I think playing alongside, you know, guys like Emilio Torres, you know, Ashton Moreno, and Almighty Soul, I'm definitely extra excited to see what more he can do, you know, surrounded by those type of guys. Absolutely. There's a couple of guys from Texas. I mean, Terrell Coleman likely going to be matched up with another high profile recruit, in my opinion, on the defensive end, Isaac Onye Franklin, both from Texas. So, I mean, look, we've got really good, really great incoming SimWorld prep basketball players showing their stuff this Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern on SimWorld TV. I'm excited. I'm psyched up. And I'm psyched up for this last topic that we got here, JR Storm, as we move on. So let's, we're going to do a little fun one today. Let's say you play for your favorite professional team, yeah? You guys just want a title. You, you've done it. You've realized your childhood dream. You got to plan the night out after the title, the celebration night. What, where are you taking the guys? What are you doing? How are you living? Well, first thing I'm doing, taking them to the local dump yard and burning some couches. You know, shout out Maestro. But, um, <laughs> burning some couches. <laughs> but, um, you know, definitely going to hit up, you know, favorite restaurant spot and then going to do a little partying. You know, always said that. I'm going to bring it back local a little bit for you on this one. Okay. I'm going to localize this. You know, growing up from where I'm from, Midwest style, you know, sports obviously at the local level, a big deal. And I always said that, you know, if I had the opportunity to win a championship, you know, 
at the you know prep or high school level you know locally where i'm from there was a certain specific local eatery i would go to and then we would go have what we like to call a parking lot party out in front of the school and then for legal reasons i cannot say what else would go on the rest of the night fair enough but you so good. you get my drift. Definitely. I get, I get the get I get the food, picture. Get some good vibe, good food and good vibes. You know, that's that's really, that, that's really my celebratory kind of stuff. Needs to be said. I think I think for me, first thing I'm doing is I'm taking the boys over to Baskin Robbins, and we're getting absolutely loaded on ice cream like we are stuffing ourselves we're gonna have a stomach full of ice cream then i like the idea of a parking lot party so i'm gonna steal that we're gonna hit the parking lot party then we're gonna hit up all of james harden's favorite hot spots you can find it in his blog oh, yeah where, where, and james harden knows where to eat you know what i mean you, you've seen that, that guy true. below he, he knows where to eat he's an eater he's an that eater as they say these days so we're going to go to all of James Harden's favorite spots. You can find that on his blog. I can't disclose what his blog is. It's private. But if you find it, it's got a lot of good suggestions. So we're going to do that. And then I'm taking them all over to my grandma's house because nobody makes late night brownies like my grandma. So the whole team's going to grandma's house. Um, that's my ideal night out after uh, after a title. So pretty electric. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Make sure you like this video. J-Rock and I don't get fed. We don't get our meals unless you like this video. So please like it down below. And remember, Sim World Sports, the only place where you can see the game, be the game. We'll see you all tomorrow. Later.